Good morning, and welcome to CT Brandon Online. Uh, I am Pastor Nikki. We are so glad you are joining us, and this is Kayla O. Um, you, you might be like, hey, Kayla O, nice to see you. It is nice to see her. She is our newest staff. Yes, uh, you're not the chief fun officer like me, which is actually not an official title at all, but uh, you are the creative team. Director. Right. 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 I think that's what I signed up for. <laughs> I think so too. You're <laughs> going to be the one that's putting in the little thing, anyways, that says what you are. So, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all those fun things. Uh, so, we are so glad to have you as a part of the team. And um, we have an initiation here right. that no one else has been a part of because it's starting now and might end after this. So, we're setting on... a tradition. <laughs> yeah, we're setting a tradition that might open only happen Us once. once. Okay. <laughs> what makes something a tradition, really? Um, anyways, I love trivia so much. We're actually having a trivia night that will be coming up. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and uh, if you don't know about that, we would love to add you as a part of the email. Uh, if you head to www.ctbrownell.com, you can be on our emailing list. Uh, so here you go. Please answer in the chat what you guys think the answers are. I gave you really easy ones, Kale. Okay. Really easy ones. Okay. Uh, what is a group of hedgehogs called? Hedge funds. Hedge funds. <laughs> I have no idea. Am I supposed to know these kind of things? <laughs> you should know. You should. Okay. Uh, it's called uh, a group of prickles. 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 All right. Because they have like little pokies on them. Prickly. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. But yeah. But right. also these are fun facts that you can just tell people later. Um, how many teeth does an adult human have? Just give me one second so that I can yeah, count. Yeah, count, count your teeth. Are we counting wisdom teeth? Here? I don't know. It just says how many teeth does an adult human have? Okay, uh, 28. Nope, higher. 32. Yeah, good job. Okay, who was the original voice for Mickey Mouse? Okay, like I know you should know this one. Walt Disney. Good job! Yes. Point, yes, Walt Disney. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mostly because also, who are you going to guess? Um, I like, don't know I anybody in the 1800s. I wouldn't have <laughs> in the 1800s. <laughs> I don't think we're going to do great as a trivia team if me and you are on no, a team. No, we but need some we're other gonna try hard. friends here. Right. Okay, last question. The term home run in baseball mm -hmm. was borrowed from what sport? Um, Anyone know? I have a sport that it's in my head. I uh -huh. just can't think of the name. You don't have the name of a sport? Cricket. Yeah! Yes! You got 50%. That's a pass you in our You didn't have to books. say that. <laughs> That's a pass in our books. Well, and we eventually kind of almost got there. Um, thank you for having fun with us thank today, you for KO. Me join. Yeah, uh, today, what you can expect is we are going to have some singing. We're going to have a great message continuing our series with Pastor Michael. And, uh, and then you'll see me again back at the end with some announcements. Uh, but we're going to have a great service, so enjoy.
Hey, good morning, church. I'm glad to see you here. It's um, Sunday morning. I've got a coffee. I'm sure you do too. Hey, I want to talk through some of my notes on Acts chapter 10 with you. Some of my notes on Acts chapter 10. This is a really pivotal passage. This whole chapter really sets us up for something amazing. Just a a quick recap of the book of Acts. We know that it's a continuation of the book of Luke, same author, same audience, Theophilus is who it is written to. And it basically just means a lover of God, someone who God loves, that's us, that's humanity, that's the people who are constantly on a journey trying to figure out how to do life with Jesus. In the book of of Acts, we've already looked at Matthias, Gamaliel, and Tabitha, and some of the different things that they've given to the story of the revolution of Jesus Christ. You know, I was thinking the other day, I remember growing up, and we'd visit my grandparents a lot, and I remember in Grandpa's living room, there was an old grandfather clock, and it would tick, 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 tick. That thing was, that, that was just loud. It was a loud clock. But I, I think it's those memories of growing up and seeing that clock and counting down the seconds until it would strike every hour on the hour. But I began to have an appreciation for clocks. Not because there's this utility to them that they, they tell time. They, they tell us where in the history of the world we are, but there's something special about clocks that they also kind of commemorate and they, they have a personality of their own. In Grandpa's clock, every time I would see it, I, I would remember Grandpa and I'd remember how amazing he was in our lives. And the same thing with watches. I've got several different watches that I absolutely love. One was a gift from Amberly, uh, and it was, um, it was just a special moment and a special time, and I'll always cherish that watch because of that. I also have one of my grandpa's watches from when he worked on the railroad. Clocks are a lot like scripture to me. They, they Sure, they serve a purpose, and sometimes we get so focused on the purpose, we focus on the, the details of what you can and what you cannot do because of scripture, that we forget that there's a bigger story that scripture's telling us. There's something important that it wants us to have memories with and to bring us along on the journey. Just because it was written 2,000 years ago, that doesn't mean that we can't have memories that go along with it now and contribute thoughts and emotion to what's happening in the greater story. So Acts chapter two, This is kind of the birth of the early church when Pentecost fell. The Holy Spirit came and and sank its teeth into society and sank its teeth into believers and gave us this mission and this empowerment that was just amazing and beautiful. So you go from Acts 2 all the way up to where we are today in Acts chapter 10. Well, this is about 9, 10 years of history. We only have really a few pages to relate to it, But in Acts chapter 10, we end up with this kind of wacky, Dr. Strange-esque story about Peter going in a trance and this other guy having this vision that he needs to talk to Peter too. So I think probably before we go any further, let's, um, let's take a look at Acts chapter 10 this morning. And we're going to start in verse 1 and read to verse 16. 
There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man and one who feared God and all of his household. He, he who gave alms generously to people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly a vision, an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and what he observed him, when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. That's kind of a strange wording. Come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea, and he will tell you what you must do. Sometimes it's good to ask, hey? We feel like we got all the right answers, we're doing all the right things, but sometimes we just need to ask. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he explained all of these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. Okay, this is where we pick up. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the rooftop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Here's the weird Doctor Strange stuff. And he saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals on the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, birds of the air. And the voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Do you remember we talked last week when you, when you see in, the, in these writings when it says, Arise, rise, go forth. This is, this is an indication that the Holy Spirit is speaking and that there is, um, there is something that needs to be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, my Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up to heaven. God, would you speak to us today? Give us your words, give us your wisdom. We just thank you. Thank you for who you are and how amazing you are. Thanks for these times when we can look at your word together, be it on the internet, but it's okay because you're still God and we're still a community of faith. Thanks for letting us continue. In your name, amen. So Acts 10, it, it'll continue, but it's this, this secondary, like super detailed, heavy account of something happening. We talked how Luke loves details. He loves loading his writings up with as much important to him detail as possible. Now the story will go on. Cornelius will meet Peter. He, Peter will go with his, with his people he has sent. Peter will preach and explain Jesus and the household will get saved. Then the Holy Spirit is about to fall again, this time in a dramatic way for Gentiles. This is the first time where we see a mass gathering of Gentiles accepting Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a really big deal. This is the doors are wide open on Christianity. The doors are wide open on what God wants to do on planet Earth. Things are shifting in this scripture. Acts 10 gets real. Cornelius, though. So professionally, 
Cornelius was a Roman tough guy. He was an Italian fellow who was in charge of about 100 men. His job was to keep the peace and enforce Roman rule where necessary. Now, the Roman army was very important at keeping the Jews under wraps. It was very important at controlling the Christians because any unrest would be bad for the empire. And you have to understand that the Roman Empire at this time was kind of like the center of the universe. They believed that everything revolved around it because they carried a lot of weight. They had a lot of opinion. It, they were really important people. I'm not sure that we know any countries that act like that from time to time. But think about, uh, think about this. So if you look at a modern map, a modern map, you stretch, go England, color it in, France, color it in, go down to Spain, Portugal, Italy, color them all in, Switzerland, Turkey, Iraq, Israel, color them all in, and then into Northern Africa, color all of that in. That is the Roman Empire. It was huge. They took what they wanted. Roman oppression was no joke. These guys were feared. They weren't respected. This was uh, an oppression like you've never actually seen. When the Bible talks about actual persecution, it was the Roman Empire. These guys were brutal. When we, when we think that we're being oppressed because we, we have to meet online for a season, that's not oppression, that's not persecution. What the Christians and Jews experienced at the hands of Rome was actually persecution. It was stonings, it was being burnt alive, hung on crosses. This was persecution. And Cornelius worked there. The hero of our story today, he worked for Rome. The guys who took what they wanted and didn't ask questions, yeah, that's where Cornelius worked. Clearly, at some point, he became fed up with the Roman gods and Roman religion because he sought after Yahweh. Now, we don't know what transpired to pull him into that world, but Cornelius was figuring it out on his own. He was figuring out, okay, how do I, um, how do I live like this? What, what do I give? Who do I give to? Uh, what do I eat? What do, what do I do? But with all of that, Cornelius was still an outsider for this Jewish religion. Now, remember that Christianity wasn't Christianity yet. It was still just guys following the way. They were part of the Jewish religion because they were still ministering mostly to Jews. So for Cornelius, he was a Gentile. He was a full-out Italian who was following a Jewish religion not living even in his own country. So it's kind of like how I enjoy watching soccer. And, you know, I got a Chelsea jersey, and I like watching the games on TV. I remember one day, I was, I was really excited about this one game I was watching. It was probably beating someone dumb like Arsenal. That's for my friend Richard. And um, so Chelsea, you know, we, we got a point in, and I, I just like hooted it up or something. And I was like, man, we got a goal. I remember Amberly saying, we? Who's we? You're not British and um, you're not on the team and you can't even play soccer. It's kind of what we're dealing with here. So Cornelius is Italian. He's not Jewish and um, he's doing his best, but he's still a guy sitting on the couch watching the game on TV. You know, there are, um, there are always good people. Good people, when, and they're doing their best. And I think we all can fall into this category sometimes. And we're trying to figure out, you know, what fits the longings in our hearts. And a lot of these people are, are seeking for something. And they're not quite sure how to get there. They're not quite sure the questions to ask, the answers to find, or who to even talk to. And I'll tell you that today, 
if you're seeking, if you're testing the waters, you're trying church, you're trying to figure it out, it's okay to take your time. It's okay to test the water. It's okay to ask a lot of questions. Most of us, if not all, have been there at one point in time. We've all been in various places of a journey trying to discover God. All I ask is this, that when the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, that you listen and you respond. That's all I ask as a pastor, because I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will speak to you, and at some point in time when you're ready and it's your time, he's going to say something to you like, okay, accept Jesus into your heart. Okay, say I'm starting this journey. Make it audible. Make this decision that this is about to happen. It's all I ask. In doing his best, Cornelius, um, is uh, verse 25, he, um, he still doesn't quite understand the whole Jesus thing and uh, falls down to worship Peter. And Peter's like, whoa, guy, get up. I'm, I'm a man like you. I'm just Peter. I'll tell you about Jesus, but embarrassing, get off the ground. So for the, for the revolution, it's important that a Roman soldier came along. It's important that a Gentile accepted Jesus into his heart and began this journey. It is important because through Luke's writings, we're eventually going to get to Rome. But we needed this foreshadowing. We needed this inroad into Roman culture. I want to focus for the next just couple of minutes on verse 15. This is the center of the story which um, Peter will even repeat. But verse 15, remember, and the voice spoke to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. If you, um, if you were watching the session we did talking about Gamaliel, he says, if it's of God, it will last. We talked about Matthias, how he was chosen by Lot. They all decided, okay, if it's whatever we come up with as a decision, we're going to stick to it and move ahead. It's right in the sight of God. Inside of religion, there was and still is this trend of fighting against what God is doing because we often think we know better. And we continuously get reminded, let the Spirit of God work. Sometimes it takes time in our lives, in our church, in our world, while we're dealing with a pandemic. Just let God work. Let him have some space to breathe. Don't crowd him. Don't tell him what to do. His will on earth be done. This, uh, this verse has very little to do with the Jewish menu. It has a lot more to do with their national identity and the culture of their spirituality. Remember, they were very much so separate and shelter as a religion. And now Jesus comes along and says, I want you to go and be among I want you to get out there, tell people about me, heal the sick, go to the ends of the earth, don't hold back. But they're still in this mode of, but I need to bunker down and protect myself from society. And I'm sure people will get saved somehow if I'm still over here hiding. There are parts of the Great Commission and the kingdom of God that can be hard to swallow for us. And they were hard to swallow for the disciples. The first thing that's hard to really absorb is that Jesus was the final sacrifice for sin. The scripture tells us that he completed, he ended, he fulfilled the law. This isn't just the stuff about don't wear cotton poly blends and now you can go and wear a fancy robe. This is, um, this is the stuff that gives us access as an individual, without killing animals and going through the rigmarole, we have access to a good 
amazing, loving, compassionate God. We have access to God. I am so thankful for that. Secondly, go actually means go. That's a tough one to swallow. The go actually means go. Acts 1.8, when Jesus says, go to the ends of the earth. I want you to go and do this stuff to the ends of the earth. This was a common phraseology at the time, and it literally meant as far as the known world goes. So for them, it would have been up until those bounds of Rome. And then once they discovered that there's things beyond that, well, keep going. To the ends of the earth. Until today in this story, Acts chapter 10, the disciples were just ministering to the Jewish crowd. There was a couple people here and there, of course, that we read about, but it was mostly just kept to a core. And now all of a sudden, the floodgates are open. And this is a shift for this Jewish branch because it's about to become its own thing. It's about to get real for them. Peter foreshadows in his writing. Oh, sorry, Luke foreshadows in his writing about Peter in this story. Um, We read last week with Tabitha at the very end of chapter 9. It says, uh, So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa with Simon a Tanner. And now we read again that Peter was with Simon the Tanner, living on his roof for prayer meetings. This isn't just written in there by mistake. So Simon the Tanner was unclean. Simon the Tanner would have dealt with animals, and he was considered unclean. Peter was already spending time with people that were unclean, knowing that God was about to do something drastic. But they needed this divine intervention after nine years. Divine intervention after nine years. N.T. Wright talks about it like this. So let's say you're at a stoplight, you're at a crosswalk, and the light is, says stop, and your child is there and they're about to walk out. You would say stop, don't go, it's not safe. I know that you want to get to the other side, but it's not safe. Then the light turns green, the cars stop on the other sides, it's okay. And you're like, oh, let's cross the street. It's time to go. It's not that the disciples necessarily got this wrong, but it was time to cross the street. It was time to go. It was time to take that next step to push that progression forward that the gospel needed. Let me ask you a question. Has God ever had to stop you and rearrange your path through divine intervention? Be it uh, an angelic visitation, something crazy and spiritual, or maybe just a friend or a song or a feeling. The older I get, the more I am coming to realize that most things in our lives are spiritual. God is constantly speaking. Churches and Jesus people do this very thing. We tend to perhaps from time to time get it wrong. We think that people need to fit into our mold in order to be part of our club. Uh, We have a Christian club and therefore you need to uh, do certain things to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, you shop at Costco, you only wear denim on Saturdays, and uh, we'll let you in as long as, uh, as long as we all agree that we like you and you're reading the right Bible. We, we operate under a lot of confirmation bias as people in churches and people in society. We, we want our songs sung. We want our memories absorbed into new people so that they can become old people as fast as possible and we don't have to hear new ideas. Terms like 
I love my church really bother me. When we were when we were looking at CT Brandon and we came and visited some people, I was purposely listening to see if anyone would say the phrase, I love my church. I'm glad nobody did. Because oftentimes what I've learned is when people say, I love my church, they mean I love my club the way it is. Don't you dare interrupt that. Don't you dare change that in any way, shape, or form. What we heard when we came here was, you know what, we're excited about the future. We're excited about what God is going to do. That's amazing. You don't find phraseology like that very often because what it speaks to is a rich history here of looking for what God's Spirit wants to do next. That is exciting. And I have to commend Pastor Gary and Pastor Vern for building that legacy here. You guys were forerunners. You guys are amazing. And you have made it easy for someone like me to come in during a weird time and lead the church. I'm glad that Peter listened that day. I'm glad that um, it took three times for it to get through his thick skull that, okay, something's shifting, something's happening. I'm glad he listened that day and Gentiles were included in the freedom that Christ brings because for most of us, that opened up for us to be here. That opened up for our relatives back in the day to push us towards Christianity, or maybe you're the first generation Christian in your family. Congratulations. You know, in the, the book of Luke, there's this, this verse in chapter 8 that talks about a light. How when we have this light, how we don't hide that light under our bed. We, we don't put a basket over it so that the light doesn't do anything. We hang that light up so that everyone can see that there is a light Something is going on here. This is, this is something shifting in society. That light is our hope in Christ. That hope needs to be put up and celebrated and shown to as many people as we possibly can. Hope is a lot like a shirt. Some shirts fit weird. Hope never fits weird. Hope always looks good on you. Have you hidden the light of hope? Is it too much work to show hope at your school? Too much work to show hope at your place of employment? Hope looks good on you. Hope looked good on Peter and it resulted in Cornelius' whole family and I'm assuming a household coming to Jesus being baptized in the Spirit of God and scripture tells us they were baptized in water to follow. Hope looks good on you. Do you have a Cornelius in your life? Maybe you have a Cornelius in your life right now. If you answer no, you're wrong. You have a Cornelius in your life. You have people all around you who are seeking something spiritual, who are seeking something that you can offer. It is hope in the name of Jesus Christ. So right now, I want you to do something with me. I want you to share this video. I want you to text a friend something encouraging. Say, hey, I was thinking about you today. How are you doing? I want you to send a, a Facebook message to someone. I want you just to reach out into some simple action of hope. If you don't have your phone near you right now, I'll give you a second to do that. I'll even help you. This is going to drive my household crazy. Alexa, pause the video. Now, if you don't have an Alexa, you're just watching this. It's going to keep going. If you do have an Alexa, you're mad at me right now. And that's okay. Because I'm mad at me right now, too. Because I have an Alexa. And I just said it again. We're going to stop using the A word because it's messing with your audio. Send hope. Today is a day that we can send hope. Maybe, maybe today, you are a Cornelius. 
Maybe you fit into this story, you know, you, you try to do things right, you are seeking, you're trying to figure out how to live a life that follows after God, or maybe you're just trying to clean up your life a little bit, and eventually you'll get to following God. If you're a Cornelius, and you're feeling the Spirit of God pushing on your heart today, um, today is your day. I'm going to lead you in a quick prayer before we conclude. Um, and if you pray this prayer, I just want you to hit the connect button on our webpage or let us know in the chat because we really want to follow up and pray with you and spend some time with you this week. But I want you to pray this prayer after me. It's nothing magical. It's just a statement that something's shifting. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you are alive. I thank you that you've been searching for me as much as I've been searching for you. Today, I repent of my sins. I acknowledge that you are risen from the dead. And from this day forward, I want to be on a journey with you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, that's a huge step. I'm super proud of you, and I can't wait to touch base with you this week. Maybe, maybe you did that today, or maybe you've prayed that recently, and you are sitting there thinking, you know what, it's time to get baptized. Uh, there are safe ways, and the restrictions allow that we can still do some baptisms. If you want to get baptized in the next two weeks, shoot me an email, let us know, send us a direct message. We want to get you baptized. There is no reason that COVID needs to stop what God's put on your heart. We'll get you baptized, we'll get things moving. You'll come into the office midweek and we'll get it all done in a safe and uh, restriction happy way. But that's for you. We wanna make that available for you. The revolution of Jesus Christ, it grows daily. And I'm going to tell you right now, not just for our church, but for the global church that is Christianity, we're just getting started. God has big things ahead. And I'm excited to be a massive part of Him. And I'm excited that you get to be a massive part of that too. I'll see you guys next week. We are all on our own journey with Christ. And for some of you, maybe you've made a decision today that is going to be a lifelong transformation. Maybe it's one of your first steps or maybe, you know, life's just been kind of stagnant and you're wanting to grow more in God and you've never been baptized before. We here at CT Brandon would love to be part of that journey with you. So if you are interested in being baptized, head to our website, www.ctbrandon.com. Fill out a connect card and say, I'm interested in being baptized. There is a way under all of these safety precautions that we can still be doing that. And it's exciting that we can be celebrating as a community that you are taking that step. So please contact us. If baptism is something you've thought about for a while, or maybe just today you're like, hey, that sounds cool please contact us. We'll chat with you about it and we'll figure out how to celebrate that with you. I also have a praise report and it's pretty cool. I, I was chatting with a lady this week and, um, and she had this great idea. She had this idea that, hey, I love to bake. I'd like to bake some dainty trays. And I know there's people that, you know, are probably feeling pretty disconnected right now. So I said, perfect, you wanna bake them? I'll drop them off to people. What a great situation that we can be in, that we can be the hands and feet. And I was able to see people just overjoyed that someone felt the need to care for them and to love them. And it was a great opportunity to not only just talk about what we had learned in the previous weeks when we've been talking about acts, but to show it, to show that generous hospitality that we talked about. So we'd love, uh, people to continue to be creative. How can we be loving others well? It's weird and yes, it may feel like, well, I don't know, I've never done this before or it might be awkward. Be willing to have awkward situations where you right run up, drop a dainty tray off and, and you kind of just have that wave. It will make people's days more than you realize. 
So that's a great praise report we have. And I'm excited to hear more and more how we can be people that are just loving our communities well. If you have praise reports or you need prayer, head to our website right on the screen and we'd love to hear those. We'd love to pray for you and to celebrate with you. We are so excited that you can be a part of CT Brandon and the community that we have here. If you are a kid, hopefully you're watching Pajama Church. If you are a youth, hopefully that you're connecting with us on Wednesday nights when we have our youth group. And we have more events coming up for the rest of us that will include a trivia night on February 19th. We are so excited that you can be a part of this family. So I hope that you continue your conversation that Pastor Michael started today with those CT questions at home. And we'll see you again next week.